Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. Have you ever tried to rig and skin or weight paint a complex mesh or a complex surface? It can be daunting, right? In this video, I share with you a little trick that will not only drastically improve your result, but will make the skinning process so much faster. Let's get started. The most challenging meshes to skin or weight paint are generally high density meshes or complex objects with different mesh density. For example, a piece of clothing with a zipper or a lot of folds, a necklace or a chain with a lot of details. As an example, I'm going to use this piece of armor from one of my characters. As you can see, it doesn't look so complicated until we display its mesh. It has quite a lot of intricate details and shapes on top of a rather simpler geometry. If you're familiar with my work, you may know that I like to have a lot of freedom when it comes to character deformation. I'm then able to create smoother animations with smears and forced perspective, regardless of the medium, pure 3D animation or game animation. It means I need a lot of controllers on each part of my characters or their features. Because if I just were to attach this piece of armor to a thigh and call it a day, a single bone will be enough, and this video will be already finished. What I want is to achieve this result, where I have my basic controller and additional tweakers to shape the mesh at will. This video is not focused on creating the mechanism, but basically it's an FK chain in the middle and some stretchy bones along the edges. This specific setup is not optimized for games, but could be adjusted accordingly. Check out this video if you want to learn more about rigging for games. So let's try skinning or weight painting our piece of armor. I reset everything, so I have my rig with my different functionalities, but the piece of armor is no longer skinned to the rig. So let's try the magic trick everybody teach you. I select the mesh, then the rig, press Ctrl P and choose with automatic weights. And I'm done. The mesh is deforming, I'm super happy, but the result is kinda shit. So I need to use another method. So let me restart fresh by removing all the vertex groups from my mesh and reparenting it to the rig, but this time I'm choosing with empty groups. The vertex groups are created, but it's up to me to assign influence to those groups. A clean method is to block the weight paint and then go into details. So I will first skin the two main controllers and then the tweaker bones. I first assign full influence to the main bone. And then I will share this influence with the second bone. I'm using the auto normalize option so that whenever I'm adding influence to a bone, the influence gets removed from the others. When calculating the influence of the bones, Blender does it automatically, but it makes weight painting more intuitive that way. So now that I have painted half of the plate on one bone and the other half on the other, I can smooth my weight painting by adding half influence right in the middle of those two bones and then progressively reducing the influence of the bone on the other part. Note that this kind of weight painting is not necessarily the right way to do it. But in that case, I just want a smooth painting along this piece of armor. Once the main bone influence is set, I can work on the tweaker bones. The method is to lock everything but the corresponding main bone. Since I rig a lot, this is something I added to my quick fabric. But you can find those options under the vertex groups option. From there, I just unlock one main bone and the corresponding tweaker bones. This way, when I'm adding influence from the tweaker bones, it will only affect the area that was already assigned to the corresponding main bone. As you already know, weight painting can be a little tedious, so I will skip that part. But this is what I will call a proper skinning method. And if you want to learn it, 
I have a dedicated tutorial about it. Once I'm done with the upper part, I can give it a try. It kinda deformed properly, but there is a lot of distortion. So this is the time I wanna use the blur brush that will improve the result, yes, but it won't be perfect. And just think about the time I will spend just to skin this side plate. So imagine a whole character in armor that would be super painful. And trust me, this is not the method I used on this jacket neither. So it's finally time to see that magic trick. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a like, a nice comment and subscribe. And the magic trick is this simple plane. Just trust me and stay with me a little more. I used the exact same method I'm gonna show you in a few seconds to skin this jacket. The idea is to use a low poly mesh with a matching topology. And by matching, I mean it matches your deformation topology. I will quickly remodel this surface guide so that you kind of get the process. I will just start from a simple plane and just, in that case, keep a couple of vertices and attach them at each corner of the mesh I want to deform. From there, I can subdivide this edge so that I find the middle. I want to snap this vertex to the top middle part of the plate, so I will first snap the 3D cursor to it and then snap my vertex to this. So now we have three points, one for each extremity and one for the middle. And that could be enough. The secret is not to add too many vertices. I will just subdivide it once to add a little more curvature and a better fall off between the extremities and the middle. Once I have a clean side, I can extrude it to the other side, snap the vertices to the geometry, and from there I can add a first subdivision and make sure that it crosses the head of the next joint. So generally you will create that grid and then place your bones accordingly. From there I will add a couple of loop cuts on the upper and lower part to be able to control the gradient or the deformation fall off. So let's weight paint or skin this deformer. Just so you know, it took me exactly 1 minute and 50 seconds to get it done and get a perfect deformation then on my piece of armor. As before, at first, I assigned full weight to the first middle bone and then I would share it with the second bone to create a fall off between those two middle bones. From there, it's super simple. I lock all the vertex groups, so you can do it through the vertex group menu. And then it's super easy, I just have a couple of row of vertices to be painted. So I will give full influence on the extremities, and then for the in-between, I will use the blur brush with full influence, paint several times until it doesn't change anymore, so that I'm sure that I'm sharing the same amount of influence between the tweaker bone and the middle bone. And I'm done. I have this super nice deformation on this very simplified mesh. And by the way, if you want to learn animation, rigging and much more in Blender, discover my extensive courses on p2designacademy.com. Learn actual professional techniques or enjoy all my exclusive free character rigs only on p2designacademy.com. It's almost time to transfer the weight of skinning from our base mesh onto our piece of armor. But before that, there is a way we can test our skinning. To do so, we can use a specific modifier that we will find under the deformation modifiers and it's called the surface deform. It's a super handy modifier, but it has its limitation. I added it to my piece of armor and I will source our skinned simplify object. Now I can click the bind button and now as soon as I'm deforming the simplified mesh, our piece of armor will follow and I get a very smooth and consistent deformation of both the surface of the armor and its model details. And I used the same method to rig this jacket. I first tested it using a surface deform targeting my simplified mesh. 
Now, be aware that it's just a test. You will have slight differences between using the surface deform and transferring the weight to your detailed object. You will generally get a better result by transferring the weight than using the surface deform. What's interesting is that once bound to the surface deform, if I edit the surface deformer, you can see that the eye poly mesh is following, but I can't use any other deformation method before the surface deform. For example, a shape key that would occur before any modifier, this shape key won't work anymore. But in a lot of scenario, you may add shape keys directly to the surface deformer to deform your final mesh. Anyway, this is not the topic of this video. So once I'm happy with my deformation, I can add a data transfer modifier to my armor piece, sourcing the deformer, and then I will choose vertex groups. And the most important, as the mapping method, I will use nearest face interpolated. I can now apply the modifier, add my armature modifier, source the rig, and you can see that now my piece of armor is following the rig and I have very nice deformation, even though its topology is not ideal. I rigged a lot of very detailed character this year and this method saved me a lot of time. This is the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.